hears some commotion. And when he hears the commotion, he asks somebody, what's going on? And they say, Jesus is passing by. Well, well now his interest is piqued. Because everybody been talking about Jesus. They been talking about what he was able to do. Talking about the miracles he was able to provide. Talking about the peace he was able to give. They've been talking about this man named Jesus. And now he has a moment. <laughs> now he has an opportunity. And this oppressed man teaches us that our faith, my brothers and sisters, has to be determined to see God's power. Mm. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Our faith has to be determined. Somebody say determined. Determined, determined to see God's power. Watch the text. The Bible says he heard that Jesus was passing by. And when he heard that he was passing by, he called out to Jesus. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Watch this. The Bible says that those who were leading the crowd, the leaders in the crowd, told the man, be quiet. Hush your mouth. Get in your place sit still and your Bible says when he heard that he got louder y'all know the Bible he said, he said you don't need what I need like I need what I need so don't tell me to be quiet the Bible says he got louder Jesus son of David have mercy on me and this my brothers and sisters and winners gets good because he's so determined to get his sight from the Lord that he does not let a detractor or a naysayer stop him from getting what he wanted from the Lord. Now, child of God, this is good to me because if the truth be told, everybody in this room and in the worship center needs something from the Lord on this Saturday, Sunday morning that nobody else is able to provide. And every now and then we show up where we know Jesus is passing by so that we can cry out to him. We come to this altar to cry out to him so he can give to us what we can never give to ourselves and somebody came today saying Jesus son of David have mercy on me and you got to be real careful when you do that because there's always some church person who is standing around and sometimes they got a title and they talking about it don't take all that you need to sit down somewhere why you always so loud why you always jumping up and sitting down jumping up and sitting down I can't see around you that's why we got the screens look up and every now and then you got to make sure that you don't let your detractors or naysayers stop you from getting what you need from the Lord. So I give you pastoral permission. If you need to raise your voice, you better act like this blind beggar and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I don't know what you need from the Lord today, but I do know this, he's passing by. And since he's passing by, you ought to use everything that's within you to get what you need from the Lord. Is there anybody in here who can go old school and say, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Oh, child of God, don't look at these folk like they're crazy when they're hollering in church. You don't know what's behind all that hollering. You don't know what they left home dealing with. You don't know what they got to go back to. You don't know what's going to happen Monday through Friday. You don't know what the doctor just told them. You don't know what the banker just told them. You don't know about that pink slip on their desk. They need something from the Lord that you can't give them. So leave them alone and let them cry, Jesus. I need to tell you, he's passing by. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. Get what you need from the Lord. Here's the good news, child of God. Your Bible says, when he raised his voice and cried louder, Jesus stopped, stood still, and said, bring that man to me. You tried to shut him up. Now you got to lift him up. Bring him to me. I tell you, he'll make your enemies your footstool. 
Oh, I tell you, he'll make your haters your elevators. Is there anybody in here who can help me give God praise that he'll use those who are plotting against you to be the determining factor for your breakthrough? I got to close. said, bring him to me. And when he brought him to the man, brought the man to Jesus, the Bible says he said to him, what do you want me to do? He said, Lord, I want to see. You would think Jesus wouldn't have to ask that question, but sometimes Jesus wants us to verbalize our request. He wants us to verbalize our need. We can walk around in such pretense, acting like everything's all right with us when we know we tore up from the flow up. And every now and then, Jesus wants to hear it from us. What do you need from me? Lord, I want to see. Now watch this, Pastor Johnson. In the original Greek, it's not, Lord, I want to see. In the original Greek, it's, Lord, I want to see again. Literally suggesting he's not the man like in John 9 who was born blind. He has seen before. But somewhere along his journey, his sight was ripped, stripped, robbed from him. And now he wants the Lord to restore to him what he once lost. Oh, child of God, I'm looking at some saints at the Wheeler Avenue Church this afternoon who know good and well you need that from the Lord. There's some people that came in here today who need the Lord to restore some joy and restore some peace and restore some contentment and restore some finances and restore some family connections. Is there anybody in here who needs the Lord to restore something? I need you for the next few seconds to just go ahead and get what you need from the Lord. It doesn't matter how they're looking at you. It doesn't matter if they're talking about you. If you need something from the Lord that you cannot provide yourself, this is why we show up in church to beg the Lord to work some things out for us. And is there anybody in church today who needs some restoration today? Well, the Bible says that he restoreth my soul. The Lord is able to keep us alive even when we feel like going down for the count. The Bible says he'll even restore the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm have destroyed. There's some folk who've been walking around in depression for years and I came to tell you he's able to give you your joy back. He's able to restore everything that's been depleted in your life. So lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the king of glory, he shall come in, I hear somebody asking, who is this king of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle, is there anybody in the building who believes with me that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that is with that work within us and I came today to tell somebody you won't leave here like you came in Jesus name I'm gonna preach till you get better I'm gonna squall till you feel better I'm gonna holler till things get better I'm gonna sweat till things get better I'll dance for you till things get better but I know somebody who is able to turn it around won't he do says that this man named Jesus said listen here man if you got enough determination to holler like that I got enough power to fix your situation receive your sight and immediately his sight was restored and when he was able to see again he did not just stand there like a bump on a log and act like the Lord hadn't done anything to him he began to praise God but every time God does something for you that you could not do for yourself, it becomes your responsibility to give him the praise that is due unto his name. I need somebody 
somebody in the building who watched God work, watched God move, watched God deliver to go ahead and praise his name because you know he's worthy. Go ahead and praise his name. Won't he make a way for you? Won't he open doors for you? Won't he provide for you? Shout it, yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, yes, he will. Won't he do it? So he started praising God. But watch the text, Reverend Keisha. The Bible says that when the people saw him and they saw that he could see they started praising God with him because his sight had been restored will you look up and down your road and see some people who've been lifting up their hands and opening up their mouth because of the restoration God has provided and for the next few seconds will you please make sure they don't have to praise God by themselves they are a photo of what God is able to do. They are a photo of the ways God's able to make. And for the next 10 seconds, I give you permission to photo bomb. Get in that photo and start praising God with them. Get in that photo. Start lifting God with them. Get in that photo. Give glory to God. this church there are photos snapshots of the great things that God has done 
<laughs> I dare say, this is a gallery of photos of all the ways God has made, all the deliverances that God has provided. It's a gallery of photos of people who have seen God's power. Had some setbacks, had some heartaches, had some sleepless nights, but you're in here today as a testimony that if you can keep on pushing, keep on pressing, keep persisting, he's able to restore. Restoration is all around this room. If I had time, I'd just begin to point out all the folk in the room that I know about that God has restored from some horrible situations. I see you, kid. Some setbacks, some, some grievous moments. But they're in here today not looking like what they've been through because they had faith to endure. And the reason why God gives us these photos is so we can go ahead and start praying to God and say like those apostles said, God, I see what you're able to do. So this is what I need you to do. Lord, increase my faith. Yes. Increase my faith. I want to be able to trust you for everything and doubt you for absolutely nothing. I need you to increase my faith. Who needs the Lord to increase your faith? Who needs it? Who needs it? Yeah, you come a long way, but you still need the Lord to increase your faith. You're looking good today, but you still need the Lord to increase your faith. Money's all right right now, even better than all right, but you still need the Lord to increase your faith. Family's doing pretty well, but you still need the Lord to increase your faith. You like your job. You like what's going on in your life, and you still need the Lord to increase your faith. Or maybe you're on the opposite end of the spectrum. You've got some challenges you're going through. You can't see the light at the end of your tunnel, so you need the Lord to increase your faith. Wherever you are on the spectrum, neither of us is perfect in our faith. And all of us need to say, Lord, increase my faith.